Hey everyone, Ashton here. I'm a family and emergency nurse practitioner and an instructor with SMNP Reviews. In this short video, I'm going to share with you some of the most common animal and insect related conditions that tend to pop up on your board exams. Now, if you want to take a deeper dive into this topic, definitely check out one of our review courses. Also be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our latest videos. So the vast majority of animal bites in the U.S. are caused by what? You guessed it, dogs and cats. And do you all remember the most common complication of dog and cat bites? You've got it, definitely a localized wound infection. What is the most common pathogen associated with dog and cat bite wounds? Pasturella multicida or P. multicida which is an anaerobic bacteria that's found in the mouths of healthy dogs and cats. Staphylococcus aureus and even some strep species may also be involved in those wound infections. Now, let's talk a little bit about wound care. We know that prompt and appropriate wound care is the most important factor to prevent infection in patients with animal bites, but what are the steps involved? I like to think of these as the three C's. First, we have to control the bleeding. Next, we have to clean and irrigate the wound very thoroughly. We want to flush out all of that bad bacteria. Now, for number three, do we close these wounds? Typically not. The majority of bite wounds should be left open to heal by secondary intention because the risk of infection is so, so high. There are exceptions such as large gaping wounds or bite wounds to the face, but we are not gonna be caring for those in primary care. Instead, these are gonna be referred out to the emergency department. So what about indications for antibiotics? Well, there are two situations where we might need to prescribe an antibiotic after a dog or a cat bite. First, for prophylaxis. If the patient has a bite wound on their hand or face, or if they're immunocompromised or have a comorbidity such as diabetes that could impair wound healing, or even if they experience a deep puncture wound such as a cat bite, then prophylaxis is warranted. Secondly, what if the wound is already infected? In that case, we are definitely going to want to get an antibiotic on board. But which antibiotic is the preferred choice here? Just remember, get bitten, augmentin also known as amoxicillin clavulonate. But you may be asking yourself, what if the patient is allergic to penicillin? Well, other second line options include doxycycline, also known as vipromycin, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, which is also known as Bactrim, and moxifloxacin. Now let's switch gears and talk about malaria. This is a diagnosis that we don't see very commonly in practice, but they love to ask about it on boards. So first of all, what causes malaria? Definitely a mosquito bite, right? Specifically that Anopheles mosquito. Malaria can also be transmitted through a blood transfusion, organ transplant, shearing needles from mother to baby in utero or during delivery. And actually over 95% of malaria cases occur in sub-Saharan Africa and even South Asia, but it's still an important disease for us to know about because we have patients who may be traveling to those endemic areas. Infection prevention is also critical, so we need to be sure to educate our patients about the importance of using bug spray that contains DEET, wearing long sleeves and long pants, and using mosquito nets. Some patients may also take preventative medications such as malarone, which should be started about one to two days before travel and continued for seven days post-travel. Now, can you think of some signs and symptoms of malaria? These may include flu-like symptoms such as fever, headache, fatigue, joint aches, even nausea and vomiting. Lastly, how do we treat malaria? While there are a number of different approaches and regimens based on local guidelines, drug sensitivity patterns, and drug availability, but these generally consist of a combination of therapies such as artizunate, chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine or plaquenil, and doxycycline. There are several more insect and animal related topics to review for your certification exams, but I hope this video helps you grasp a few of them. 
If you're interested in learning more about any of these conditions and how to pass your board exam, definitely check out one of our review courses. Also, if you are looking for an amazing free community of students prepping just like you, be sure to check out our Facebook group. And these are gonna be linked in the description below. And here are our references. And that is it for this video. You are so close to becoming a real deal NP. Be sure to check out our other videos. At SMNP Reviews, we truly believe that with the right preparation, you can totally pass your boards. We are rooting for you.